Hi, I'm Ben Crow from Crimson Guitars. I am in my home studio. I am going to be building a unique, custom, lightweight electroacoustic instrument with a multi-scale fretboard, and uh, you're going to watch the whole thing. This is a full build. It is, without a doubt, going to be the sexiest instrument I have ever built. Burn it. Ha <laughs> 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 yay! I'm having fun. Hey, yeah. So here we have our ebony fretboard, several pieces of flamed sycamore and a chunk of mahogany type wood. And I'm making the body out of a lightly flamed, torrified sycamore. I am going to be cutting the fret slots and then gluing it onto a neck. And once it's been glued down to the neck, I will check again that everything is straight and perfect. We need to make a neck for that. I actually often wonder whether the editor should uh, increase the speed of all of my monologuing by 10%. And I also wonder whether any of you would notice that. But anyway, uh, I need some veneer. Once I start gluing, I am not stopping. It's a nice noise. I find myself in need of a small router plane. And while I have one, uh, the blade is a little bit wider than what I need and that is to put a truss rod in this guitar neck. And, uh, well. Definitely not the prettiest tool in existence.
We have a guitar neck. Inlay. I'm going to do something a little bit risky now. Uh, with many inlay materials, you can glue it down to the fretboard and then mark around it with your scalpel blade so that it's absolutely in the perfect position and then melt the super glue or warm it up a little bit, remove the inlay and recess. Well, I'm really rather happy with this. Pretty much there. Now, binding, binding is somewhat problematic. I don't have a section on this wood long enough to do my fretboard. I am totally loving it. Uh, I am going to sort out, uh, sort out wings for the headstock. these pieces and create binding for the, for the neck. On with the job. I'm looking forward to this. When frets go on a guitar, that is when it starts to properly become a guitar. We are here. It is rectangular. The headstock looks like dog poop. And yeah. What are you doing down there? 
Uh, the, the question is, does a headstock have to be flat? And no, it doesn't, not in the slightest. Uh, the back of the tuners is flat, but the, the, the front can be anything. What I'm going to do is put a modern radius carve on the headstock. The back is going to be flat, the front is going to have a veneer on it, and it's going to have a curve to it. Normal headstocks are normal and boring. I want this to have a modern radius carve and maybe even something else a little bit more fun. Oh, hell yeah. So last week I cut out a truss rod cover to match the 12th fret inlay. And uh, we're gonna try something that was suggested in the comments, and that is to essentially turn it into a, a moon just coming out of the course. And uh, yeah. Side dots. I am going to be installing stainless steel tube with mother of pearl dots inside the tube. That gives us two refraction indexes, I suppose. Uh, two different materials that are gonna re uh, reflect light at different angles and different places, etc., which will make this better. Uh, it's fairly straightforward and, uh, well, there we go, drill some holes. Boop. That was a bit silly. This is one of the most beautiful pieces of wood I have ever experienced. I could just get lost in this. I'm going to be taking four or five pieces of plywood, roughly gluing them together in a uh, rectangle. And once that has cured, later in the day, we're gonna take our template and figure out how to make an external mold. I want the ribs to be on the inside of the mold and uh, so I can use an expansion clamp or something like that to hold it in place. We can use these edges here, potentially, as the edges that make up these sound holes. I'm going to move on to the next stage, which is 
jumping several stages ahead in the build. I'm gonna need kerfing, piece of soft wood like uh, pear or something like that, something that's very easy to bend, and you steam bend it and glue it in place and you're done. Uh, that is traditional IE 1600s or so, so 17th century. The way we do it now is we take a table saw and we have a slightly thicker piece of material, say three millimeters, and we cut saw curves into them uh, every so often, i.e. regularly. And in order to do this quickly and easily, I need a table saw sled. And uh, I'm going to build a very, very, very basic, very quick table saw sled. Chunk of wood. That'll do. never thought that I would ever try and bend a five-piece side, six-piece side to an instrument, um, but, but here we are. Well, my four curving bands have turned into 10 or more, but that's fine. The only thing I need to add is this sound port thing. And then I will have a, a homogenous, gorgeous side. Let's, let's get to that. Let's get on with this then. So what I need to do is get a great big piece of sandpaper, really. Let's have some fun.
I need to make a go deck. And uh, I have the requisite threaded rod. Essentially what we need to do is drop that, is install this here using chunky threaded rod at each corner. And uh, in between them, I can then, you've all seen this, you've all seen this. You basically put a, a bit of dowel or uh, carbon fiber rod or something like that. And that acts as a clamping clamp between the two, the top and the back. With that done, I can make absolutely certain where my bridge plate is going to go. I'm getting incredibly excited about this whole thing. Obviously I need to you know, add more and then do carving and uh, free it up a bit. This should be all right actually. I didn't doubt it for a second. Okay, flip that over, make a back brace, glue that in, do some carving. Now, before I do anything, I want to stabilize this a little bit. So I'm gonna clamp it, I'm gonna clamp it between the uh, top and back plate with a little bit overhanging so I can, so I can play. What do you think? I'm gonna thin these down, I'm gonna scallop them a little bit and uh, scallop them a little bit sideways as well, remove a little bit of bulk and see where we end up. If you've ever worked with torrified maple, you know, you know. <sighs> okay, moving forward. I am going to glue on the veneer and the burl maple to bring this up to thickness. It's gonna look stunning. Uh, while that is curing, I'm gonna remove the temporary block of wood that's just holding the, the, the two sides of the ribs together and prepare for the next stage. Oh yes.
On to the neck. So the question is, how do I transfer this multi-angled strange shape onto the top so that I can cut it out absolutely perfectly without any gaps or issues? And uh, it's actually a lot easier than you would think. That That is... I'm done now, I'm going to go and have a celebratory coffee. I said cup of coffee, I meant mug and I meant two, but you know, we, we, we're all right. We, we understand each other. Copacetic. What we have here is Nebula too, and she's coming together. So here we are. A little bit of a drip. And this is, of course, just the first stage of doing the back. All right. So I think we just leave it here, yeah? I am going to be applying a very dry coat of stain to lift it all up again and bring it back and uh, this is hopefully not going to flood too much into the gold we, we should still see the gold coming through in the grain filler um, but it's going to make everything vibrant and then we can start applying uh, lacquer etc we have this exposed bright white golden line of binding that I think it's just too loud I think Here. and this is going to be a million times better under lack Once the lacquer is in, drill these holes out, install the rods, and everything's gonna be great. What am I going to do now? We are ready for 
Laka. I am going to be making some custom guitar tuning key heads because I fancy it. I'm just, yeah, okay, fine. Calm down, Ben. I am very, very happy with how this has turned out. Shiny. Alrighty, we have got, we've got a guitar. At this stage I realised that of course I should have left it in a group of five so that I could inlay all the aluminium in a nice, handy strip. I have yet again made my life more difficult. To the frets. The fret ends have already been done, but I have lacquer on the ends, and I just want to finesse them and finalize that shape. There we go, all sorted. Uh, I do have a little bit more polishing to do, I'm on with the Crimson Guitars Fretboard Restorative. Off we go. I need a logo and it's not going to be an inlay, it's going to be 3D, it's going to be suspended and beautiful. So I'm going to make that out of a solid chunk of metal. Let's do that then. Uh, the initial process is exactly the same as a standard inlay. I'm, I need to cut the shape out and then things will change a little bit from there. Perfect.
And I'll make some holes. Now it comes to guitars, we are not only a guitar building school, a purveyor and manufacturer of fine guitar building tools, we make some of the finest pickups that can be made. And uh, Sam, who is our master pickup designer, uh, took up the challenge here and really liked the idea of making a very, very thin pickup that actually sounds good. Started to think. <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm <laughs> starting to think that maybe, maybe routing it would have been less scary. Um, definitely over quicker. I'm not going to install the pickup now. There's no point in doing this thing twice. So uh, I'm going to make a bridge, do all of the wiring and all of that jazz, and then we'll install the pickup and the strings and we'll have a guitar, eventually. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what we I'm really rather happy with this. I've been avoiding this. I don't want to finish this project. But I have to. found this. It's a dead PC power supply and uh, all of the cables have got this lovely mesh over them and uh, while I think it's plastic and non-conductive it is going to hide the nastiness that is aluminium foil tape.
I'm going to put a couple of strings on, just the uh, treble and bass, and see where we get with intonation. Battery clip. I'm going to customize this and see where we go. Let's put it on the latency. I'm going to chop it right down. 